Hey guys, it's Jen here, just coming on live to talk to you today about the Organize Now Challenge for March. So hopefully um, I'm not too dark. It seems a little dark in here, but just wanted to come on because this month in March is the Organize Now Challenge once again, and we're focusing on toys and games. So anybody that has, hey Joe, anybody that has toys or games in their house, this is a month for you. Now you might automatically hear this and think, well, if I don't have kids, it doesn't pertain to me. But I feel like most people have some sort of amount of toys or games in their house, whether or not they have kids. So this is for you. This includes video games, board games, card games, anything like that, as well as anything else that is considered a toy. Um, so this month, the goal is to, as always, let me just go over the Organize Now Challenge rules again, is the Organize Now Challenge is eliminate, consolidate, and donate. Okay, so eliminate means anything that you don't love or use needs to go. And consolidate means when you have things spread all over your house for that specific category. Now last month we did beauty products. So a lot of the consolidating also had to do with cons actually physically consolidating the product. This month it's gonna be more along the lines of bringing all of those same types of things together into one area. So let's just give an example of cards. So say you have decks of cards. This is a specific game that people have all over their house and I see that they have five to 10 stacks of cards and they keep them in all different areas of their home. The key to organization is always making sure that you keep all like things together. So number one rule with organization is every single thing you own must have a home and number two is to keep like things together. So if you go around your house this month and you're focusing on toys and games and you bring it all into the same area, like try to, I know it's hard, but like maybe you'll have like an area that you don't use as much, like a spare bedroom or even the basement, something like that where you can bring everything, or maybe you have like a dining room you hardly ever use, but this month bring all of the toys and all of the games together into one area just so you can wrap your head around how much of this you have. Hi, Jill. Um, so that's why you do that. You consolidate so that you can eliminate, so that you can see, hey, I have too many decks of cards. I have two, I have two candy lands. Um, this just happened with one of my clients this week. She's like, oh, I didn't even realize I had two candy lands. You don't need two candy lands. Um, it's the same thing with toys. So eliminate anything that you don't love or use, which means if your kids have outgrown it, you don't use it anymore. Nobody in the house loves it. Nobody else likes it. You're not using it. That goes. <clears throat> Number two is consolidate. Bring everything together because what you're going to do this month is we're going to do give everything that is in this category a home. So normally when you want to be organized, you want to make sure that the category doesn't have more than one or two areas in your home. So for example, with toys and games, you might have some games in the living room and then you might have some games in your kids' room. You might have some games in the basement and then you might have some games in a bonus room. It doesn't matter as long as you're not spreading it all over the house. That's when you know that you're not organized. Um, as far as games go, it's the same thing. Bring it in, eliminate and consolidate. And then finally, my favorite part is to donate. So once you've said, okay, I want these games or these toys, I'm keeping them, great. Hold off on that for a second. These are gonna go. Where are they gonna go? We know they're gonna go out of the house, but are you gonna sell them or are you gonna give them away, which is donating? When you're talking about donating, it doesn't matter if you give it to your best friend, doesn't matter if you give it to your neighbor, it's still donating. If you give it to a charity, it doesn't matter. One of the things um, that we like to promote all the time right now is called Local Give, which is that part of our ministry that we just launched that is trying to say, you know what, if you have things that you don't long, you don't no longer love or use in your house and you want to get rid of them, you want to give them to somebody that needs them more than you need them, look in your local community, do a Google search and decide who is taking the things that you're getting rid of. So for this month, you want to Google search who is going to take 
donations of toys. Now I know this time of year it's a little harder than it was during the holidays. There's so many organizations that want to take toys, but you can still find them. There's all sorts of different, um, every community, doesn't matter, but look in your local neighbor, neighborhood, do local, um, do a local search and say, donate toys plus, and then your county or your town. And these organizations will pop up that need your stuff. And that's a good way to get you motivated to let go of the things that you don't need anymore. Another good um, idea for your local community is just to ask at your school, like, hey, has anybody had a fire? Um, is there any kids in need that need these types of items? And usually your, you know, the people in your community will tell you, hey, yes, they do need it. So that is one thing that I want to press into this month is to make sure that once you've decided, okay, these are the games and toys I no longer love and use, they can leave the house. But step two is where am I going to put them? Where are they going to go to? Because I'm telling you right now, you guys, the more you can find an organization that touches your heart, that really speaks to you, the more motivated you will be to let go of the things that you don't use. So um, this month, do that. And if you find an organization that you really love, please, please, please email us, organize at jenniferfordberry.com and tell us about the organization because we are trying to grow um, the directory under local give on the website just so that from now on, all these awesome organizations that need the donations that we're focusing on will be listed on the website. So that's the really cool part about it. We want, I mean, Salvation Army is great, Goodwill is great, but I want to spread out into all those local mom and pop organizations that don't have a big, huge following, um, but still need the stuff just as much. I know, for example, right here in our area, um, a lot of people don't realize that there's All Baby Cherish. Hi, Heather. Hi, Lana. Um, that places that, like we have a place called All Babies Cherish that needs infant toys. Um, we have um, the YWCA that takes toys for the kids that are in the domestic um, violence program where they basically give the mother a safe house and now the mother has kids that need toys. Um, I know we just talked about Christmas cheer for children at Christmas time that we do in our area where we try to make sure that all the kids throughout our community that are in need have Christmas. So there's so many organizations, but again, I could go on and on about that. Just do a Google search. Um, okay, so back to toys. One of my key tips for toys um, and games in your home is to make sure that you are rotating. So any child, I mean, you know as an adult how overwhelming it is when you have to go into a space and clean it up and get it organized and you don't know where to start. I hear that all the time. My clients are like, I'm so overwhelmed, I don't know where to start. Well, a child is 10 times more overwhelmed than we are because they're, first of all, looking up at this huge mess and they're smaller, their brains aren't able to you know, compartmentalize it as much. So it's more difficult for them. So you're doing your child a favor by actually taking control of the toys and games for them. You can't say to a kid, hey, go up to stairs, Johnny, and um, organize your room if the room is completely packed from the floor to the ceiling with stuff. That is absolutely ridiculous for any child to do. But what you can do is sit there and teach them, hey, we're gonna let go of this. Um, can you, you know, I used to do this with my kids all the time. Can you pick five toys that you might wanna help give to a child that has no toys. Usually kids have big hearts and they're more than willing to do that. So kind of go through it, role play, you know, what would you want to give? Wouldn't it be awesome if you could be the person that gives this little girl down the street two of your dolls when you have six, you don't need all those dolls and then you feel really good and happy in your heart by giving. So we want to teach the kids to do that. So um, you want to make it less overwhelming. You want to make sure that their space isn't so packed. You want to, as the parent, I call it the first sweep. So that first sweep where you really decide what stays and what goes, that is up to the parent. I don't think it's good to let the kids constantly make all those choices themselves. It's overwhelming and they like to know that mom and dad are in control, that mom and dad have it. You're like, I've got this, I don't have to worry about making such difficult decisions. 
then maybe there's those questions like, hey, what ones could you give to another child? Or what toys don't you like anymore? What toys are too babyish? Which ones do you maybe want to let go of so we can make room for new toys? Things like that. And the second big tip for any toys um, with little kids especially is to do a rotation. So, I mean, it's so funny. If you take, when kids are little, if you take half their toys away, and then you bring those toys back out in six months, it's like Christmas morning all over again. The kids are so excited and it's like, you can make things that they already own last a lot longer by just creating new excitement for them. So make sure that you're rotating, probably, I would say every six months, maybe every three to six months. Um, but that is the two big, big tips for, um, for toys and games. I'm gonna be posting a lot of tips and clips on my website and on Instagram this this whole month of March. Um, so there's actually, if you're not following already, go to Instagram, Jennifer Ford Berry, and you'll see like I did last month with the beauty products. I'll just keep posting kind of ideas of organization that I think are good or products that I like or ways that we think um, maybe that things should be stored. Anything that I think is legit a good idea, not just a way to buy more products because a lot of times you gotta be careful. A lot of times organizing products don't make you more organized. Um, so Heather, we talk about kids who don't have toys giving to them. I love it, I love it. I think, you know, kids, sometimes I've seen this with clients where the kids want to give and they have an open heart and they have open hands and they're like, I'll sit down and when I work with a child and I'll say, what what do you wanna get rid of? And they're like, I don't like this, I don't like that, I don't want that anymore. And then mom will come in, usually mom, but sometimes dad, and say, well, you know, Katie, you're gonna get rid of that? Grandma bought you that for Christmas. And then they automatically feel bad. So you're teaching your child without even realizing it to hang on to things, to have a death grip on things. And what we wanna do is teach our kids to have a giving open heart. We don't want them to be attached of any thing in this life because they're not keeping it forever. So you want them to go with the flow. You want them to have the rooms kind of grow with them. And so if you have kids now that are teenagers, you don't need to necessarily keep every stuffed animal for when they're little. You don't need to keep every doll, every game, every book. You can move with them, you can grow with them, and you can have um, their, you know, their ages change. And so should their tastes and so, so should their environment, just like we do as adults. So I want you to really think about that this month. Toys, games. Um, another thing I wanted to show you is, I'm actually going to put a picture up um, this week, is you know when you have games and the cardboard box is just shot and it doesn't store the game that well anymore, there's these really cool um, plastic bins from Michael's or anywhere where crafts are sold. It's basically meant for the perfect size of a scrapbook, um, scrap paper, like for scrapbooking. Those, they're about two inches deep. They're great. If you have a game that you want to save, and the box is shot, they're perfect for storing all little pieces that go with the game. Another thing is card, decks of cards, when the box is shot, you can go and buy just like a $1 at the dollar store, a little, um, the travel container that soap, you use for soap when you're traveling, like a bar of soap, perfect for any card game, whether it be Skippo, Racco, I don't know, Racco isn't a card, it's actually in a box, so that wouldn't work, because there's those little, um, staffers. Anybody play Racco out there? Love that game. <clears throat> so it would be more so for a deck of cards, Skippo, Uno. That was what I was thinking about. So things like that where it just came into a card box, they're perfect. It's a travel soap container and they're, they work great. Um, I'll just be giving out other ideas when I think about it this month or pictures if you follow along, but it will be in the Organize Now Challenge, which is through Facebook. Um, that's a community of people just just want to get organized and I just give out you know whatever tips resources throughout the year and then Instagram and then the website is jenniferfordberry.com we'll be putting up this video along with some tips um, for this this category but just this is what the organized challenge is all about focusing on focusing on one um, type not so much a space but a type of product for the month something, a type of category, let's call it a category, for that month. Because I think when people want to get organized, they're just so overwhelmed by 
everything in their house, they don't know where to start. But the other thing is because we really, um, I think as a whole in society right now, we just have too much stuff and we need to start learning how to give it more freely. And we need to be really intentional about what we're keeping. Like, are we actually going to use this or are we just afraid to let it go? Or are we just living in the maybe? And I always tell people, do not live in the maybe. Do not keep something saying, someday I'm gonna use it. You're either using it or you're not. You either love it or you don't. That's all you need to remember. So I thank everybody that came on and watched this tonight. And I say hi to everybody that's watching live and that will watch it um, throughout this month. So Organize Now Challenge, uh, hashtag Organize Now Challenge, and follow along on Instagram and Facebook. And have a good night. Bye, guys.